Howdy ho, YouTubers. I'm back. Welcome to episode number 26. So, after a period of time being away from the camera, I'm back in front of the camera. Um, I'm currently up at Simpson Valley uh, again. Uh, this is where I predominantly do most of my fishing at the moment. Um, that and because I'm a bailiff here now, I am spending a lot of time here. Anyway, um, it's been a very, very busy period for me over the last sort of like month, two months, um, just investigating a lot of things. Um, some of you may know that I'm in the process of trying to, you know, create my own kind of like fishery, um, which is working out to be two things. One, lots of paperwork. Two, lots of investigations. And three, lots and lots of money. So um, it's nice to be up here, nice to be back in front of the camera and actually doing something. The weather lately has been absolutely horrendous and this weekend is absolutely no different. However, I thought that I'd get the camera out because the wife has been on to me about doing another blog and I've had, surprisingly, a lot of, uh, a lot of um, messages in my inbox about doing another blog. When am I doing another blog? So, here I am. Anyway, 48 hour session. Manard Lake behind me, um, there's about 25 carp in here, uh, they go to around the 36 mark and there's four fish that are definitely over 30 in here. So um, two fish came out of here during the week, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to get up here, do some filming and hopefully land a fish. I've um, been doing a lot of fishing down on uh, Upper Fuzzy of late, of the last like, sort of two or three sessions. Um, had a nice little 26 pound uh, ghost common out or ghost mirror out of there last week. So I'll put the picture of that one up to show you. Fish just bossed right in front of me here. That's all good signs. So yeah, ready to go. So um, I'm going to get the rest of my gear set up. Luckily enough, it's dry at the moment, but it's going to be really, really wet this weekend. Um, so filming could be a bit of an issue, but I'll do my best with it and we'll see where we go from there. Rods are already out behind me, so I'll show you where all those are fishing. It's pretty straightforward here. Um, it's not a huge lake, it's about two and a half acres. Uh, but we are in pike season as well now. This is a pike water as well. It does get busy with the pike anglers. However, um, it's not something that I've ever found to be an issue up here. A lot of the guys just dead bait. So um, there's not a lot of lures being chucked around and things like that. You don't really find it here. Um, they just kind of like dead bait, use your float. You know, they may chuck one around every hour, but other than that, it doesn't really cause me too many problems with what I'm doing, that, and I'm in a nice little corner out the way. So anyway, that's enough of that. Let's get everything uh, sorted and uh, I'll show you where everything's fishing. Right then, so uh, this is my uh, swim. As you can see, there's uh, quite a lot of um, quite a lot of water here. It's a nice little channel. This goes in between uh, sort of two islands here. So I've just got one, probably about a rod length out in front of where the landing net is, just out in the middle there. I've decided on that spot because it's a little bit deeper water there. The fish cruise up and down that channel quite a lot, and it's a good interception point for. Uh, for nicking a bite so my right hand rod is located all the way over in this corner uh, just in between the gap in those trees just over there about half a rod length off right at the bottom of the slope it's an area where I have picked fish up before so you've also got like this this whole bay of water over here um, so you can you can fish over there there's another peg on the other side of the island but I've chosen just to fish that gap because um, this area here is kind of like all tree lined. Uh, you get a lot of fish just sort of like holding up in those in those marginal snags. So uh, I'm locked up over there and uh, that is the right hand rod. Okay, so that's the rod locations for the next kind of 24 hours. Uh, they are fishing on a, a solid bag with a little white wafter inside. Um, I don't really use the pop-ups on this water as much. I tend to use a wafter to try and get everything to match. Out with the uh, 
the PVA bags, I'm just putting a literally one scoop of uh, a mix of kind of like your standard pellet, um, boily and the boily pellet from Baitology that I was using in the last video. So uh, that's all I have a little bit of glugging up with the salmon oil. Um, I tend to find that salmon oil works really well in the winter, surprisingly enough. Um, a lot of people would stay clear of the, the kind of fish meals, but I don't really find them to be too much of a problem. I find it effective all year round. You just have to watch the amount of it that you put in. So um, the weight of bait is these days, most baits are soluble, digestible, and um, you know they can be used at any time of the year. So that's what we're using. Let's give you another quick little close up of that. It's quite a small little mix. There are some 15 mil boily in there, but I've just kind of broken most of them down. They just kind of like go like that. So yeah, a lot of crumb, a lot of bits and pieces. I fish a lot of bits and pieces in the winter uh, just, to, just to give it a bit of a difference really. Fish will eat a bigger bait in the winter, but um, you know, if you can imagine that a fish's metabolism slows down, the easier you make something to for them to eat, you know, the more of it they probably will eat. So that's the idea behind it anyway. So that's the bait. So with the weather being the way the weather is at the moment, obviously uh, everything gets dark and dull really, really fast. We're at uh, five o'clock now and uh, everything's already pitch black outside. So I thought I'd take the time now to um, just sort of, you know, make a cup of tea and uh, talk to you guys about the progress of my uh, project. So for those of you that don't know or you're, you're new to my videos, um, I'm basically in the process of uh, the idea of creating my own kind of like fishery. I've got a seven acre field uh, out in the countryside and uh, at the moment we don't do anything with it. So two years ago uh, the wife said to me, you know, well why don't you, why don't you turn it into a fishery? So two years down the line and two years of sav saving and planning and things like that, um, I'm now coming into the sort of like position of where I'm able to sort of like look at things and um, you know have a good have a good idea of uh, what I what I want to do there. So my first port of call was to try and find out as much information as I could from the internet. Unfortunately, that proved to be pretty useless. There isn't really a lot of information in regards to planning out a, uh, a fishery. There's a lot of information on how to build fisheries and things like of that nature, but there isn't a lot of information in regards to sort of planning permission and uh, what you can and what you can't do. So when you've decided to, that, you know, you've you've dug your lake and, and things like that, the way that it works is you register with a, with a uh, governing body called CFAS. Um, I can't remember what CFAS stands for, but basically it's registration of, of a uh, fishery. So once you've done that, um, you'll then be classed as a course fishery. That's when the environment agency come into it where, you know, they, they do your stock control and, uh, you know, what, what kind of fish you want to put into your lake, uh, what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do, um, and a record of any fish movement because that, I think that they're so afraid of fish getting into river systems and things like that, that um, there's a lot of uh, rules and regulations around that kind of thing too. So as I said, like that proves to be a dead end for me. I'm not really at that stage yet. I'm in the stage of finding out whether or not I can actually dig a lake or not. So there's a lot of myth and uh, a lot of legend on the internet about what you can and what you cannot do with land. I've got a, a field that is used for agricultural use. Now, a lot of people have said on the internet, you can dig a lake. Some people have said you can't dig a lake. There's a lot of, um, a lot of myth and legend with it, if you like, because you, you can dig a body of water in a field. However, it's got to be for the purposes of agricultural use. What I want to do isn't in that direction. What that would basically mean is that I could dig a hole in a field, I could turn it into a lake if you like, but I would never be able to stock any fish in it. So I decided to take the approach of going direct to the council and finding out exactly what I can and what I cannot do. So I called Torridge Council, which are kind of like my um, my local district council. 
Um, they were a little bit unsure on the phone in the planning department because it's not really a question that comes up too much. They're very used to dealing with things like house extensions, conservatories and things like that. But when it came down to talking about a course fishery, they weren't really too sure on what I needed to do and what I didn't need to do. So um, they offer a service called a pre-planning application advice service. What that basically means is I take all of my plans, all of my ideas, so I write down what I want to do. Um, I provide them with photos of the layout of everything, the area that I want to use. Um, and basically I put all of that into a document and then I forward that to the council. Now the, the council do charge for that service and it's something that I've had to pay quite a pretty price for because it's charged over an area. So instead of just being like having, you know, an application done, because mine's done over a thousand square meters, um, you pay per hectare. So it did work out quite expensive, but it's gonna be worth doing because at the end of the day, I'll be able to find out all the information that I need to put in a planning application and whether or not it's even acceptable because there's no point in putting in a planning application for, you know, X amount of money when the outcome could already be that you can't go ahead with your project. So all the information went into uh, an envelope last week. It basically included all of my documentation, what I wanted to do, my photos, my ideas. Um, all of that went off to them last week. They received it. I've paid for the pre-planning application now and I'm just waiting to hear back from a planning officer who will take a look at my ideas. He'll look at the use of the land and he'll he'll tell me whether or not um, it's a it's going to be a feasible um, project for me or not. Um, when they do the pre-planning advice, they go to all the governing bodies. They go to uh, the environment agency to make sure the land's not on a floodplain. They go to um, the heritage um, heritage organisations. All these different organisations, electricity companies, uh, water companies, all the all everything you can think of highways they just look at everything and they decide whether or not and then he gives you an informal opinion of whether or not you stand a good chance of having your your project approved for planning so to date that's as far as i've got with um with everything uh it's been a long uh long two weeks to say the least but uh i feel like i've got the ball moving a little bit now and i can you know have a have a good idea of you know what what i need to do for the future good morning youtubers so uh it is the morning after the night before we ended up with hell of a lot of rain last night and when i say hell of a lot of rain i mean hell of a lot of rain so it's only just kind of like stopped now it's about half past nine in the morning and it's been a very very quiet night i did have a couple of bleaks on each rod which i think may have been fish just kind of like passing through but um unfortunately we didn't get any kind of any kind of activity on the rods after that um it's been very very quiet and uh yeah it's got a northerly wind now as well which really isn't going to help my matters but I'm going to leave the rods out now until around 12, 1 o'clock, I think, and then I may have a recast uh, and then assess the situation from there, providing that it's not raining. So uh, I'm the only one on the complex, funnily enough. I'm the only one crazy enough to be here, I think, but um, I'm going to uh, sit it out anyway because I'm here now. So I'm definitely not going to be moving today because uh, everything is waterlogged. So uh, I'll be staying right where I am.
Right guys, we're 24 hours into the session now and absolutely nothing has happened. So as you've just seen, uh, the left hand rod that was fishing in the channel, I've taken that one out of the channel now and I've relocated it over in the corner that I showed you at the start of the video. It's also another place where I've picked fish up from before. So uh, I know that they kind of like get in and around all those kind of like tree areas. It's nice and clear out there. It's nice and flat. And the, the, the beauty about it is it's a little bit more shallow. So um, I can get the best of both worlds in this swim because I've got one area of it that is quite deep, goes down to about eight foot. Um, and then I've got the other area that kind of slopes up and that comes up to about four foot. So that's where I've located that, that right hand rod, uh, the left, left hand rod at the moment. And then the right hand rod, again, you've seen just into the corner again, haven't put any extra bait on that one or anything like that. But I am gonna leave that one where it is because it has produced fish for me before. Unfortunately, all day I haven't seen any shows or anything like that. So um, I don't really have anything to go on at the moment other than what I'm doing. So um, if I see a fish, I can always, you know, whip out, chuck a bag at it and see what happens. But until I see that, nothing's, nothing's really gonna change. So uh, that's where we are, 24 hours in, unfortunately, 24 hours of blanking, but uh, this is the winter and this is a specimen water up here. So, uh, you know, it makes it even harder. The reason why I came up here was because two fish came out during the week and, you know, that sort of kind of gave me the incentive to come back up here for a session. So, you know, you never know, we might pick one up. It is a bit of a night water, so I don't really expect anything to kind of really happen until the hours of darkness. So that's probably going to be my sort of like best chance for it. So, uh, yeah. Right. Some, some lunch for me now. And then, uh, yeah, maybe the weekend wife box. Who knows? And now... What you've all been waiting for, the Weekend Wife Box! Oh, yeah, more. <laughs> Hello everyone, so me being me in standard fashion, uh, managed to get the wife box, so I've had to return home quickly because it's only sort of a 10 minute drive away from the house. So I've come back to do the wife box because I didn't do it last time. This is Minchia Pipples, he's here to help. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. Number one. A standard energy drink. It's quite dark. Number two. Oh. See. A radio alarm clock. <laughs> Where are we, Yeezys? Shoelaces. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, design your own house. Should have had design my own lake. Never mind. What age is it for? I don't know, probably about four. Three to ten. <laughs> Batman key ring. Batman key ring. Another standard energy drink. Oh, what's this? Vegetable curler. <laughs> so when you buy the late, you can just curl your vegetables. Oh, brilliant. Thanks very much. <laughs> a, a rat. I gave you this. <laughs> no, you didn't. I bought it. Are you sure? The dog likes that, though. Look. Get out. Get out. No, don't do that. He's rats. Mm. No, because... Pickles doesn't like rats. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, another energy drink. <laughs> Can you see that? No, I think you need to bring it closer. <laughs> Donald Trump bog roll. <laughs> Happy Meal toy. <laughs> okay. Where did you get that? I don't know. What's in it? Oh. 
You can't actually see. Oh, that's nice, whoever he is. Don't know. Two tins of baked beans and sausages. Yes. Heinz, like though. And Heinz, yes. Oi, wait, go. That's just the size he's going to have the mouth. Right. Right. Let's take that away before we have what I've brought through. A croissant. A can of whiskey. I don't drink whiskey, but looks like I will now. A cup. The standard cup that says... Cup of the week! Cup of the week. I'm no pancake expert, but I know a tosser when I see one. How nice. <laughs> And one more thing. What is that? Threading machines. Why? Why a threading machine? What's it for? I don't know. I just found it in the bottom of one of my selling boxes. Oh, okay, brilliant. Thanks very much. A selling, a threading machine. And if anyone's in need, just give us um, a little message, and you can have that free on a giveaway. Yeah, we'll do that. On, we'll do that on a giveaway on the next, the next, uh, the next blog. We'll do a giveaway for a free threading machine to anyone who wants it. Oh, and the croissant. Yeah. And the rat. And the, I think maybe <laughs> yeah, auction it all off. That was the weekend wife box! Woo! Well guys, unfortunately the afternoon so far has been quite uneventful. Um, I haven't seen anything, heard anything. I've had no liners whatsoever. So um, I thought I'd do this last bit of filming before it gets dark because it's uh, about four o'clock now and within an hour it's going to be dark. So I think the best chance that I've got is during the hours of darkness anyway um, it does work like that on this water sometimes especially towards this time of year so uh, the two fish that came out in the in the week did come out in the hours of darkness so fingers crossed for tonight but until then there's not a lot else I can do I'm just gonna leave everything where it is um, I'm not adding any more bait to anything uh, there's enough out there more than enough out there really so I'm just gonna sit back wait and uh, hopefully Save a blank. Howdy ho and good morning YouTubers. So uh, nothing happened at all last night. Absolutely dead, not even as much as a liner. So we're now at about 10 o'clock in the morning um, and I'm going to be packing up kind of like around the midday mark uh, to get off and uh, get myself home again because there's not too much point in sitting around for two days when absolutely nothing's happened. So yeah last couple of hours we'll see what happens uh let everything dry out a little bit and then slowly start packing down i guess hi guys so we've come to the afternoon <clears throat> uh stayed a little bit longer than i anticipated uh was just stayed a couple of hours extra really just to see if i could pull anything out but um unfortunately a blank in style for me so uh not my first blank on here won't be my last blank on here either there's only 25 carp in here and um <clears throat> it's it is quite a hard water but the rewards are there if you stick at it so uh yeah anyway that's another video from me thanks for watching and i'll see you at the next one i'll keep you updated on what's happening with the fishery uh in all my videos now so you get to know the progress of what's going on and you know how far i've got with things hopefully each video i'll be a little step closer to uh Having my own place, you never know. But uh, until then, tight lines, guys. Thanks for watching.